Hello, my name is Mariah, and I'm going to be taking you through my river of life. Um, yeah, excuse my lack of artistic ability, but this is what I'm working with. Um, so yeah, I start here. Um, this is me in the boat. Uh, and so you can't tell, obviously, from the drawing, but my paddle is backwards at this point in my life. And the river is intentionally uh, more narrow at this time. Uh, yeah, so I was born in a smaller city in... Um, sorry, on the border of Alberta and Saskatchewan in Canada. Um, I grew up with my mom, my dad, and my younger brother. Um, and both of my parents had a lot of um, struggles and difficulties when they were growing up within their own families. And I think because of that, they kind of learned how to parent my brother and I as they went. And they did a really, really wonderful job. But kind of within that... Um, I felt quite sheltered from my extended family when I was younger, and because of that, um, I was a really, really shy kid, and I was a really, really fearful kid of um, most everything and everyone, and I've since found ways to kind of escape that um, part of myself, but yeah, so that's when I was younger. Um, here, there's some rocks, so this point in my life is representative of grade school, um, so I've always, I think, by, been... <laughs> I've always been quite an empathetic person, as are most people that choose to do this work. But when I was younger, um, my ability to be an empath was unevolved or underdeveloped, and it really manifested as people-pleasing. And so I spent a lot of time um, around people that didn't treat me um, very well, and I was really unable to walk away from that until I got older. Um, yeah, and I grew up in a very oil and gas based environment and around like a lot of conservative people with very conservative beliefs um, which involved like a lot of racism a lot of homophobia and that was just kind of like embedded in me just because I had never known otherwise and I think I spent a lot of time when I was younger being really ignorant um yeah so that's there um, then I graduated and I took a year off and I didn't do a whole lot and then I ended up moving to Edmonton um, I'm studying Bachelor of Arts, um, and then I applied for, or I wanted to apply for social work, um, but I didn't meet the criteria to get in at the time, and so I decided to apply for child and youth care with a plan to eventually transition into the social work program after two years of child and youth care. Um, yeah, so the summer before I started um, CYC, I worked um, at a place called the Native Friendship Center, um, running a daily summer camp for kids and the program was um, free and so a lot of the um, a lot of the kids we saw were living under the poverty line and that was my first time kind of being exposed to that um, but yeah no I really I really loved that job and having the opportunity to work with those kids <clears throat> and then I started child and youth care and this is kind of where my paddle flips and um the river gets bigger and just as I went on in this program um things just started to work out in my life in a different way I felt like I was honoring what I was meant to do and through that everything just like fell together in such a wonderful way um and I'll kind of explain that more as I go on yeah, so I started in child youth, child youth care. Um, I wanted to work in a school when I graduated. That was my plan as like a guidance counselor. Um, I wasn't even sure what that really meant, but I knew or I thought that working in a school would offer a lot of stability and predictability, which is something that I was very much rooted in. Um, so yeah, I did my practicum in a school um, for Indigenous um, youth, and I, I really loved it. I loved those kids. Um, it was really great. And then second year happened, and we um, at McEwen, we are put in a residential program for our second year practicum, and I didn't even know what a group home was, because they didn't have that um, where I grew up, so I was terrified. I was so scared um, to enter that space where kids were living and I wasn't sure what to expect and that was a really difficult year for me a lot of learning but it was also um just the best I, f I fell in love with um being in that life space I loved the kids that came into that house and I just felt so lucky to get to be in that space 
that's when my love for residential care really started. I actually still work at that same group home. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I loved it so much. I never, I started and then I never left. Um, and second year is also when I had a seminar instructor that really, um, really understood me and she really um, pushed me in ways that she she could see that I needed. And one thing that she really challenged me to do um, was to start incorporating um, my spiritual beliefs into my practice. And so not so much um, ideas of organized religion, but um, just kind of spirituality as in connection to a purpose. Um, yeah, and just finding meaning in things. So for me, that looked like different, um, like like having plants or a garden, um, or being in nature, and just finding um, finding comfort and meaning in those activities. Um, yeah, so that was my second year, and then third year was my absolute favorite year. I stayed working in the group home, and this is the year when a lot of the concepts started to come together for me. Um, I was in a class um, about applying developmental theory with Jack Phelan, and that class just like, uh, it just, it made the most sense. I, yeah, I became just like obsessed, <laughs> I guess, with these concepts and with learning more and with figuring out how to apply them um, and articulate them to other professionals that I was working with that maybe didn't have the same education or understanding as me. Um, and I, I really, um, through that, I've really come to love advocacy because um, I think what, um, what child and youth care practitioners do or what I was doing and continue to do in residential programming can look um, like nothing. But I think the depth of it and being able to articulate the depth of what is happening um, is huge. And a lot of people see residential programs as just a place to live that is trauma-informed and all these things. And my view of it is that it is a place that kids come to heal. Um, yeah, and just trying to articulate what that looks like to people that I work with and to other professionals that work with these kids. Um, yeah, I, I love it. And I could talk about it forever, but I won't. Um, and then my fourth year practicum, um, so I got the practicum that I thought was my dream job, which was working um, in a school with like a guidance counselor type role, and I really, really struggled this year actually, um, because it just wasn't for me. Um, I knew that my heart belonged in residential care, um, and I really struggled to, um, to exist as a child and youth care practitioner in a school, um, so yeah. I still enjoyed it and I made a lot of nice connections with kids, but I, I realized that I needed to honor what felt right for me, which was residential care. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and then I graduated and now I am here. I applied for this program because I, I just, I can't imagine stopping my learning where it was. Um, yeah, I feel like I would be doing a disservice to myself to, to stop then. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to learning a whole lot more, um, and when I'm done this program, my goal is to um, be an educator or a trainer or to do something with people that are coming into the field um, or that work in the field and to just really, um, really share these concepts and um, these ideas and these activities and everything that have really allowed me to create the change that I feel that I have changed or to create the change I feel that I have made or supported in, um, in the kids that I've worked with throughout the years. Um, yeah, I think that that is it. Yeah, I look forward to learning with all of you and I will see you guys soon.